<clears throat> All right, welcome. What I'd like to do is uh, show you how to solve this equation here. And the important thing you notice is we have a cosine of 2x uh, and also cosine of x. So when solving a problem like this, uh, what I'm going to have to use is use my double angle formula. So I notice I have cosine of 2x, so what I did was I previously wrote up uh, my double angle formulas for cosine. And you can really use either one that you, you know, any one that really kind of suits you the best. And so I'm going to kind of determine which one is going to work. Now, obviously, for, you know, if you have the sine, double angle sine, there's only one formula that we've been provided, so that's what you're going to have to use. But for cosine, we can pick and choose which one we want to solve for. So, and I'm looking up here. Remember, when we're trying to solve for an equation, we want to get that, we need to get that variable, you know, isolated, right? Or we need to write it as a sum of two products that equals zero. So when I look up here, to solve this problem, I can't isolate just one cosine. I have two separate cosines in here with my variable x. So I can't combine these any further. Um, and I can't right now, I, can, I can't right now factor out um, a cosine that's gonna give me the product of uh, you know, two cosines that I could use. So I need to get rid of this cosine of two x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a problem. Now, if I choose this first formula, I mean, I'm going to introduce sine. Well, I don't really want to introduce a sine and a cosine. Um, and here, if I introduce this formula, I'm going to be, again, introducing a sine. So what I'm going to do is rather than rewrite, rather than write cosine of 2x, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to now rewrite that as 2 cosine squared of x minus 1 minus cosine of x equals zero. So all I've done is I've replaced the cosine, the double angle cosine, with the formula two cosine squared of, of x minus one. And again, the x and the u, those are just your you know, variable for your angle, or your unknown angle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna rewrite this in kind of a standard form. And what I'll notice is this follows a very resemblance of a trinomial that I can factor. If I kind of forget about my trig functions right now, and I just rewrite it as 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0, what I want to do is I want to say, well, can I factor that? All right? I mean, that's a trinomial. Let's see if we can factor this. And what I'll notice is since my middle term is going to be negative, I'm going to want to subtract. I'm going to want to multiply my 2 times a negative 1 plus 1. And then so what I notice is, is that factorable, does that work? Yeah, it does. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as 2 cosine of x plus 1 times cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So now what I've done is rather than, you know, isolate one of them by themselves, I've been able to create a product that equals 0. And we know when we have a product that equals 0, we can rewrite these both to equal one of these has to equal zero, so we can rewrite them as two x, two cosine of x plus one equals zero, or cosine of x minus one equals zero. Now I can simply solve. And I get cosine of x equals negative one half. And here I add a one to the other side, and I get cosine of x equals positive one. Now I need to take a look at my unit circle. And I believe I forgot to write in what the constraints. I believe the constraints of this problem are between 0 and 2 pi. So we're not going to be adding any uh, simple answers here. So first of all, when does cosine equal 1? Remember, cosine is our x value. Well, if you look at our first point, um, that's going to be 1, 0. The angle at that point, since it is um, included with 0, is going to be x equals 0. So that's going to be our angle when cosine of x equals 1. Now over here, we have negative 1 half. Well, negative 1 half is going to be that angle down there and that angle right there. And I can write that as negative 1 half radical 3 over 2. And this one's negative 1 half. I'm sorry, that's positive. Yep. Negative radical 3 over 2. So those two angles where I have those points, are going to be, uh, x is going to be equal, let's see, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And ladies and gentlemen, that is, uh, that is how you solve when you have to do factoring, uh, factoring
factoring to solve your uh, with a double angle formula as well. <laughs> a lot of stuff, right? There you go. Angelo Oberry, please report to the main office. D'Angelo Oberry, 